So it's uh, another one of those days where I'm not really sure what to show you. It's not a lot of tourist attractions that are open, and there's not much on the president's schedule. Nothing public outside, for example, no motorcades. But then lo and behold, I got a little word from some people up on Capitol Hill. Something was going on at the Congress's fence. So let's head up to the Capitol. Hey, it's, uh, it's a rather nice day today. Like 74 Fahrenheit, it's like 23 Celsius. And I am walking down, down to the U.S. Capitol, and then I'm going to come back, probably past the White House and the monuments, work my way up, maybe Embassy Row or Georgetown. It's going to be a pretty good hike today, too, maybe three hours, and we'll see, we'll see what interesting things we can see along the way. Yes, there it is. This house. This property at 3411 Ordway, which is currently being renovated, is the William Slayton house, built for a man named William Slayton, who was in charge of the Southwest Washington, D.C. redevelopment program. Now, what's famous about this house is the original architect, I.M. Pei. I.M. Pei, the designer of the Louvre, the designer of the Bank of China in Hong Kong, the designer of the modern art gallery for this art gallery in Washington, D.C., is a famous, famous architect, but when he was a young professor at Harvard, an assistant professor at Harvard, William Slayton contracted him to build a house. It is one of three I.M. Pei designed houses in the world. There's one in Texas, and then there's I.M. Pei's own house in New York, and now this one here in Washington, D.C. So architectural historians like to come by and take a look at that house. It's a rather famous place. Here. So this is actually a low-lying um, station it's in this area. All the water seems to flood into the station every time it rains. They've got to do some better design. Ah, it's an old one. This is one of the older car sets which are a bit dirtier and ickier. Oh, this one looks, the newer seats. Mm. Let's go find a middle seat where nobody will bother us. You know how many times I encountered broken escalators in 10 years in Hong Kong? Maybe a dozen. Do you know how many times I encountered broken escalators in oh, DC? Every day. Let's just cut through here and get yelled at again. Now we'll go through this door. This is the main hall of Union Station. Pretty empty right now. <sighs> From a gilded age, a gilded ceiling. No, actually it's gold leaf. <laughs> Let's head out to Massachusetts Avenue. This is Embassy Row. In about 24 blocks, it's Embassy Row. Oh, there's a protest. Always a protest. What are they upset about? That's the roof deck where the Capitol webcam is located. You guys are asking if there's an exit sign. There probably is an exit sign on that door. Or that door, I would imagine, because there's supposed to be like tables up there where you can eat. And then there's that little like stairwell building just above the roof deck. I think the camera's back there. Maybe that's the exit sign above that door. Or maybe it's inside that window. I have to watch the webcam tonight and see exactly where the exit sign is. 
But if there is an exit sign, that's where you would see it. It would make sense that there would be an exit sign above a door off a roof deck uh, so people could get off in an emergency. But maybe I have to come out here at night and film at night and see if you can see it. And they're doing a doggy inspection of the bus. Yeah, there's a little dog on the other side. He's going to come around the back. There he is. Pretty dog. <laughs> Interesting here. No more razor wire. So we're on Louisiana Avenue and it looks like they have removed the razor wire from this section of the fence, which would be a positive development, perhaps indicating the section of the fence is going to go bye-bye, or at least move to the other side of the street. Got to protect the porta potties Yeah, but see, there, this, this section of the fence protects, now, it protects a bell tower and an empty park. Really no point. And it closes off a main artery. God, if they open this, they could reopen the exits to the freeway. They could reopen all sorts of stuff. Hmm. Some National Guard guys coming into duty. They got their packs, weapons, everything. I don't know if they're getting off that bus or they're going to get on the other bus. Honestly, I think they're bored. I have not seen more than five or six protesters at this fence line in, you know, months. Oh, whoa, there it is. Oh, the guy didn't get in the bus. He went to get on the uh, porta potties. Now, I can't really make it out either. Maybe I'll zoom in when I get home. I don't even see him taking it down. It's all just spooled up inside there. Yeah, they're picking up all the pieces. All the little metal snippets. So they gotta pick up all the little wires that came disconnected from the fence. That's a miserable task. The barbed wire truck, the razor wire truck. The whole fence is going away. I think. Are they reopening this or do you know? Are they going to open this road, or you don't know? Uh, yeah. Sometime soon? Yeah, they, I think uh, tomorrow. Oh, that would be great. You guys got to pick up all those little pieces. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> well, one more road. That's good. Yeah, that's Hey, guys. So we're on the mall. I just spoke to the workers who are removing the razor wire. And they tell me they're going to reopen that section of the road as early as tomorrow. That would be Constitution Avenue and Louisiana Avenue. That's a, that's a huge part. That's a huge cut that would really make traffic a lot nicer. There's one more section over there. I think it's called Washington Avenue. And if they can open that little bit, that would really make it easier to get around the Capitol building. These two little corners have cut off uh, the whole Capitol Hill neighborhood from the rest of the city. Still, there's a lot more to be removed. Just take time, I guess. Honestly, I've never stopped at this plaque, but it says, near this site, the National Grange of the Patrons of Husbandry was organized on December 4th, 1867, in the office of the superintendent of the Propagating Gardens Department of Agriculture. And well, you know, <laughs> if that doesn't sound like the Ministry of Silly Walks, I really don't know what does. <laughs> Siding on the Air and Space Museum down here. I don't know if they washed it or replaced it. I think they might have replaced it. And you can compare it to the stone that's down here where they haven't started any work yet. 
as long as this taking the bummer is it's going to be only halfway done soon they got the whole other side to complete this is the trump hotel this used to be the old post office central building it's beautiful inside i don't know if i can even go in though but, oh, i think i have to be a guest now you can go up in the bell tower in non-covid times and take a look at the city it's a beautiful view from up there uh, i definitely recommend going inside not just because it's the hotel but because the view is so amazing there's another opening in the fence here they can open the fence here when they're ready i don't know if i can see the marine uh, i can kind of see the marine let me see if i got my other camera with the better lens not a lot going on Nobody on the roof that I can see. There's a guy at the door down here. Two guys. But uh, let's see if we can look over towards the west wing. Somebody going in. There's a couple people outside. I know they're swearing in the attorney general later today, but I think that's in the executive office building, not the west wing. More people just walking around. There's quite a few people walking over to the building. You guys ask if I ever see people? Well, yeah, I do. Sometimes cops, sometimes staff. No tourists, though. There's more people over there walking around. So maybe these plastic dividers are going to be for the road. So we're gonna head down to George Washington University, which is just over there. But I wanted to stop at this house. This is the Cleveland Abe House, A-B-B-E. And this was the house that President James Monroe lived in after the White House was burned in 1812. He resided here, but also a guy named Cleveland Abe, A-B-B-E, lived in this house. And he was the founder of the National Weather Bureau. Now it's an arts club. Art Club of Washington, but the house itself is still very historic and dates back, well, to the early 1800s at least. <laughs> so this is the GW Hospital and the entrance to the subway station. Looks like we got some street chess going on. I should bring my kids out here play some blitz <laughs> there's like a Starbucks in the hospital and then I think it connects into the med school building, which is right over here. Yeah, so people go back out into the med school, in and out. So we are now at the intersection of 24th and H Street Northwest, next to George Washington University. And I wanted to show you this. This, you see, is the center, that's a truck. This is the center of the earth. This is the American meridian. And on the left-hand side is the Atlantic hemisphere. And over here is the Pacific hemisphere in the American West. And this line from 1848 to 1884 is what the United States regarded as the center of the earth. This was before the prime meridian in Greenwich was accepted by the United States and many other countries. The old U.S. New England Observatory was down there, and this meridian line ran on a, on a line right out of the old U.S. Naval Observatory. So here you can see the American Eastern Hemisphere and the American Western Hemisphere. So if you guys want to come and see the center of the Earth, American style, Come over here to 24th and 8th Street Northwest.
Let's go down to the water gate. So there you have the Watergate Hotel, apartments, condominiums, office buildings, headquarters of the Democratic National Committee in 1972, and scene of the Watergate break-in. So now we're down on the waterfront in Georgetown along the Potomac River. You guys see me come here a lot. It just makes it nice. It's a little bit cooler down here too. There's a little breeze. I'm wearing a hoodie today. I probably am overdressed. I could probably have gotten along with just a long sleeve shirt or even short sleeves. Let's see how much. It's a little choppy today. I don't think there's uh, not many crews out rowing right now. Maybe when the water calms down a bit later, they'll go out for a row. I think restaurants are at 25 or 50 percent capacity. I'm not sure. They're open outdoors. I don't think. I guess they are open indoors, but indoors is very limited. This was the winter that basically everybody ate outdoors. <laughs> I wonder if they'll keep that on next year. You guys want to go out in the wood? Yeah. Not much going on back that way. So let's cut up through this. Fountain, which I guess they're going to turn this fountain on pretty soon. Looks like they're actually working on the fountain. This is an ice skating rink in the winter months. YouTube will even hit you if you've got someone doing a cover of some music. YouTube's algorithm or check will actually find the song and then contact the real creator of that song and go after you. It's so unbelievably annoying. These are just the garages. They're probably worth a million dollars each. Yeah, yep, yeah, we're back at Rockland's. Barbecue is good. So guys, we're eating next to a construction site, pulled chicken and fries, once again, at Rockland's. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. I'm heading home after this delicious lunch. Bye now.